natural flames. The sand had drifted and heaped up beside the wall. Emily sat down and sifted the grains through her fingers, finding thin needles of paper-white bone which looked vaguely familiar. Fish bones. It's a whole new ecology, said the guide. These are the shores of the lake, but they were once desert hills. Now there are birds that catch fish in the lake and build their nests in the cliffs. Please come away from that wall, madam. It's not a safe place to stop. We're actually very high up, then. Yes, it was almost inaccessible here before they dammed the lake. No one came but a few hermits or hunting parties, not since ancient times. Before they dammed the lake. Before they dammed the lake. Her mind was drifting around. It was so high up that there must be a lack of oxygen in the air. It was making her drowsy. Who built the wall? The guide didn't know. Emily looked down the slope. The others were paddling in the shallow water at the edge of the lake. Herbert had his trousers rolled up. How like his father he looked in their old holiday photographs. Boring, fat, white man, always shouting, pretending it was because he was going deaf, but he could hear every word if he wanted to. It was deliciously warm here. She leaned back against the wall. I should be quite all right here for a while. I'm having a rest. The guide looked at her carefully, said nothing, and moved on, his footsteps dragging slowly through the fine sand that looked like a sloping beach and was really at the top of a mountain. How deep it must be further out, she thought, closing her eyes and seeing those cool dunes lying under water, full of bright fish darting through valleys and villages a dark mile below the surface. She opened her eyes. Herbert was a little apart from the group. She couldn't hear anything from here, but the way they were all standing told her something. Perhaps he'd argued with the Watsons again. It had happened so often. She made friends on these cruises, and then, when they shared a table with another couple at dinner, Herbert would get into some silly argument and start throwing his weight around. He didn't really know anything special about policing because he was an MP, nor about fox hunting just because they had a country cottage. The wall behind her, built of reddish stone, had a rubbed, almost velvety surface. Emily turned her head and looked at it carefully. There were deep lines and scratches, so straight that they could not have been random. She looked at them for a long time, and thought at last that she could make out shapes, the lineaments of a human form, pointing a stick at a creature with huge horns. Someone had climbed up here, toiling up the mountainside. To do what? To build the wall, as a hunter's hide, maybe? drawing the shape of the creatures he sought. She put out a finger and traced the shape of one of them. Another minute, and she reached down, picked up a fishbone, and started to scratch. As she did it, she was shocked and horrified at herself. She would never, even as a child, have gone out and scribbled graffiti anywhere, and now she was probably defacing an ancient monument. But she didn't stop. She could see her hand in front of her, the fingers holding the piece of pointed bone, almost as if they belonged to someone else, scratching something into the wall, and heard dry scraping as she did so. There was another sound now, a distant shouting. She turned again. Herbert was further out in the lake. He was probably going for a swim. He hadn't brought his swimming things, but then... Herbert would never go swimming in the buff, or even in his underpants. She turned back to the wall. Herbert's head appeared out of it. It was covered with a red coating, the colour of ancient plaster, as if it were part of the wall itself that had become alive, bulged and gasped out. Herbert's mouth was open, and he was shouting something, his thick red tongue waggling in the cavern of his mouth. Emily! the head shouted at her. Emily, help me! Really, he looked so comical. Emily went on scratching round him. She'd never been any good at drawing, so most of the figure was just a stick man, with this head like a piece of shrieking sculpture stuck on the top of it. 
The Watsons were coming up the slope towards her, floundering in the sand. Herbert popped his head back into the wall. It went flat again. What a fool, thinking he could just go for a swim, said someone, and then another voice said, Shh! He can't have realised how cold the water is further out, a third voice was saying. Emily didn't answer. She was thinking of the fishes in the dark valleys and the drowned homes of hunters.